Hey guys, what's going on? It is Chris here from Creedom Publishing Company and Creedom Book Services. I'm here today to talk to you guys about Scrivener. Um, Scrivener is a creative writing program that I recently checked out. I'm still in the trial period of it. Um, I was recommended this program. Um, I'm a avid Word document, Microsoft Word user. I have always used Word to create my books, but after seeing a couple of my uh, author friends using Scrivener, well, well, I didn't know what program it was. I saw them outlining and they were posting pictures of them outlining on social media and things like that. So I asked them, hey, what program is that that you're using to outline? And they told me about Scrivener. Um, they told me to check it out. Some people like it, some people don't. But I actually checked out the program. I am in, I believe I'm halfway through the trial period. I will be, uh, purchasing the program and using it from now on to create my books and to create my stories. Um, there are some pros and cons that if you are used to Microsoft Word and Microsoft Office period that you will find Scrivener a little bit more difficult to um, navigate and use just because of the um, page settings, the inserts, the formatting you can do in Word that's much easier because you're used to it that you may need to uh, just take a couple weeks, months, whatever you need to do to actually learn Scrivener. And I'm, I guarantee you, you will like uh, the overall package that Scrivener provides over Microsoft Word. So just for you all who don't know what Scrivener is, um, you can just go to Google, type in Scrivener. They have coupon codes as well to get a discount. And it is literature and latte.com. Um, it'll come right up, and you can check out Scrivener. You can download the free trial and just start checking it out. Like, there's so many things you can do with the program. You can actually check out some tutorials. But when I was looking through tutorials, I was trying to figure out how I wanted to outline it, and a lot of people were confusing. A lot of people were getting rid of a lot of the features, or they were using some features that were so complicated to me that I don't outline that way. Uh, for those of you who haven't visited our website at freedombooks.com, if you actually go through our website and you go up here to the top corner and click on the downloads, we have a bunch of free stuff. Uh, we have uh, <laughs> wallpaper you can download for your phone, coloring pages for children, but we also have writing tools. These are the actual outline worksheets that I created for myself. Um, that a lot of my peers and a lot of fellow authors they use they download it from my website and they use um, they have the story idea the genre setting everything like that you actually have the setting worksheet and you actually have character creation worksheets which I use for um, each character so I always have that reference when I'm creating my story um, these writing tools were great for me um, I love them I love using them um, the only issue is you will run into is if you misplace the file, if you're out, if you don't have that the 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 files on you, if something happens to the this paperwork after you print them out and fill them all in, you run into the issue of hey now I have nothing I don't know where my outline is unless you made a backup somewhere. Um, that's the only issue you run into. So Scrivener. Actual program Scrivener actually gives you the opportunity to outline your book within the program and also type and create your book in the same program. So you won't even have to use the character worksheets or outline if you don't want to. You know what I mean? So you can actually have it here. The only con with that is uh, it's all digital. So if your computer crashes, your laptop crashes, if you're using a laptop, it gets stolen and things like that, everything's going your outline, everything. But that's why you, you have clouds and OneDrive uh, storage programs and services that you can use to back up your work. So that's recommended when you're using Scrivener. Um, so to get started, when you open, when you download this program, and when you open it, you're gonna come to a page, uh, a pop-up like this. It's getting started, it has an interactive tutorial, has a user manual, it has video tutorials for you that are on YouTube. Um, I recommend checking them out, um, a bunch of other ones rather than this one, just be, to get an idea of uh, different styles and how people outline because this style may not necessarily work for you. It's very simple. So if you're a very 
complicated person, a very detailed person that you need a little bit more detail than I use for my book, then check check out a bunch of other tutorials to see how other people, other writers outline their work. Um, you have a blank template for whatever you want to use that for. You have the fiction template. You have non-fiction templates, um, script writing templates, which is amazing, and you have miscellaneous uh, templates as well. You can also create your own templates, which I did in the fiction uh, category. I'm a children's book author as well, so I have a children's book template that I'm going to start using for my children's book to outline them. And I also, well, I'll make a video for that later as well for the children's book author, so you guys can check it out. I have the create a novel template. This is the template I'm actually going to create for you guys right now. And just to give you an idea, and you can just save it. I have a murder mystery novel template that someone sent me when I first started using the program. They said it might be a little easier. I didn't. I didn't like it <laughs> unnecessarily, so I just created my own. You have novel, novel with parts, and short story. These are the three templates you're going to start out with. Uh, that are actually going to come with, with the program. So novel is the one you want to create, and you cre you'll create the name, and it will pop up just like this. I saved this as tutorial, but this is everything is going to come up as. You'll have your novel format. The novel format is it basically gives you in a about this. So it tells you how to use this template. It tells you about compiling your work, such as your front matter, which is over here to the left. And then you'll have your manuscript. Everything in the manuscript gets uh, exported when you um, are ready to export your document for either uploading to your print on demand site or if you want to actually make a PDF or a Word document or things like that. The thing that's good about Scrivener that is better than Microsoft Word is you can actually save it as a the Kindle ebook file or an EPUB file. For those of you who do not know, these are the files you need to use that need to be uploaded in order to have your book placed on the digital market in terms of for readers and things like that. The Kindle ebook is the Mobi file, M O B I file, and the EPUB is for iBooks, Nook Press, and other uh, digital platforms for your book. So Scrivener actually allows you to export in those files so you can stay away from programs such as draft to digital and things like that I know some people who don't even use iBooks because they don't know how to convert their book uh, their PDF or their Word document over to the EPUB so this makes it very simple very easy um, for the for you to do because it is all in Scrivener um, so this shows you how to use the template compiling your work um, your front matter all goes together you, you research you have template sheets for character sheets and things like that. You have the characters, places, all these things right here. Anything that's not in the manuscript is not going to be um, compiled for the export. So to compile a standard manuscript, it gives you everything. Everything you need to know about compiling your work and getting it out in the paperback PDF format. Everything you know need to know, the ebook format. So check all these out. Check this out before deleting it. I know some people just delete it right away. In um in some of the tutorials I watch, but don't do that. You could leave it there. It's not gonna do any harm um, having it there. It also has information on how to make changes to your subtitle, to the author name, to the font, the special characters, everything you need, and it has sample documents as well. And a final note uh, um, in terms of saving your saving as a template rather than a document. So that's the front matter. Make sure you check that out and um retain some of that information and use it towards your outline and towards your book. So we have the document view um, just to jump up into some of the stuff for the program. We actually have the cork board as well and then the outliner you can actually view. So these different views are very good. Um, the manuscript, this is what the cork board looks like. So if you create more chapters it will actually have the cork board and everything you need to know about it right here lined up I'll give you guys an example real quick I will show you how I actually outline my stories um, so to start I have the cover I need my cover there sometimes it gives you information just looking at the cover this is a story called the guilty verdict which will be which is a vigilante justice mystery 
um, that will be released in 2019. I'm looking towards the summer. This is the cover of the book. So I have that, uh, the first thing I have. You see, I still have the novel format up there. Um, I have pre-production. I have my character. I have my places. I have my manuscript. Um, I have my synopsis. I have my front matter. And then I have the research, whatever research I need in the templates. And then you have the trash. Anything that you put in the trash, you'll need to empty it. You'll need to empty the trash so it so it can go away. Once things go in the trash, they stay there, and they have um, a little icon for you to extend the umbrella under the trash. You can see what documents are in there. So to actually empty the trash, you'll have to and get rid of those documents for good. You'll have to empty the trash, just like on the desktop and um, the recycle bin. So I have the cover, which you guys already see. I have pre-production. The pre-production um, really don't have to have the out, uh, outlining rules. I usually have the concept, the plot, and any notes I have about the outline here in the pre-production. So, just my outline and rules. The concept is the concept is basically starting with a what if uh, question and free writing. Um, ask yourself questions that are related to the story and just see where it ends up. It just take five to ten minutes just to write out a concept about what the story is about. This can be a lot of people say this is very similar to the synopsis, but I think it's a little different because it's in the pre-planning. So, what what is your story about? Ask yourself the question: What is the story about? Who is the main character? What happens to the main character? What are some of the the obstacles, the trials, the tribulations they face in the story, and what's going to be the outcome? So you do this little free writing, and you have this here, so you always have, uh, and you can type in your concept notes or, or anything you need to do. So the plot is, this can include the history, plot points, whatever method you want to use, snowflake method. Um, we can dive into the methods a little bit later about the different outline methods. You can create a history of the world and outline the present up until the point where the story takes place. Beats is your story in a narrative form. So it's kind of like the concept a little bit, but you are doing basically a narrative of each setting which I would say each chapter because that's how I outline mine some people doing the acts and scenes I just do mine basically strictly by uh, chapter you will write <laughs> right check that out you will write summaries of each chapter and build off of them once you begin your manuscript the plot point method is separating your story into acts and breaking down your inciting incidents plot points and midpoint I don't do the plot point method. I don't separate mine into acts. I know people do three acts and things like that. Just it gets a little bit too complicated for me. Um, so I just rather do it the way I, I like to do it. I would say like the, I like the beats method a little bit. The snowflake method is good as well, but I just do a, a, a standard outline, outline of my chapters and things like that. And then pretty much use the concept in the beats method. Um, the characters, you can create your characters and identify the journey you're going to take the readers on with each character um i would say start with your main character free right about them um use the role the template rules i use this and i'll show you it in a second and then you can write about the history and the same thing with the places right you could use the uh the photo option to add photos and things like that so my characters if you see i have them broken up into Main characters, supporting characters, and a full character list. I have the names of some of the characters. Obviously, it's not a, this is not complete. So I have here like the reporter. So I know the character going to be the reporter. I have to give them the name. Um, so my main characters, I have them all broken down. Uh, these are the main characters in the story. The supporting characters, I have them broken down as well. So I actually use the character sheets that were given, and we have a. Uh, one of the characters is Jason Justice. I haven't completed it yet, but you can complete the role in this story, the occupation, physical description, personality, habits and mannerisms, background, internal conflicts, external conflicts, and notes. What I do is I use, I'm a visual person, so I need reference, I need pictures. So this is a picture I just Google offline. I just use Google and look at pictures of people that inspire um, my characters and my characters are inspired by, how would they look? Um, just to give you an idea, Jason Justice is an attorney in Philadelphia. Um, he's one of the best attorneys. He's not only so you, he has that that new formal look. Um, he's like wealthy, uh, everything like that. He has a nice tight suit instead of a baggy suit. It's fitted. Um, 
clean cut everything. So this is my character. So I save them as um, the pictures and I add the pictures to them. So I'll show you how to do that as well. This is another one. So I have Eugene Berdachevsky, which is the defense attorney, and this is the firm he worked for. This is the actual phys physical description, 6'5", 300 pounds, dark hair. And then you have little notes here. Eugene has ties to the Russian mafia and is also and also Philly gangster. So he's a criminal attorney who basically represents the most ruthless criminals in the city of Philly in this story. So I actually have a photo of what Eugene looked like. Like I said, some of these photos are just taken offline and off of Google. They're not going to be used for anything, so I don't have to worry about any like copyright issues or anything like that. They're just references. They're just visual references for your characters. And I do that for each character. Um, I'll outline them. I'll add the pictures and the rules. Each of these will be filled out. So I'll show you how to do that as well. And then when you do your plot points, they have the characters as well in the court points. So this is the actual outline of them. They'll all be together when you look at the document view of them. They'll all be lined up down, down the line. And then you'll actually have your court board. You'll see this better in the chapters um how this looks and then you have the actual outline of it and you can actually double click and things like that and move it around and duplicate this is very similar to this court board but this is the outline review um so we'll close the characters and places setting sketch this will be the main setting this will be philadelphia the role in the setting and i have a motel that takes place um that where someone gets murdered at so just to give a little spoiler get a little spoilers about the guilty verdict could because you viewed it so someone gets murdered in this hotel so i actually have the hotel i actually saved it as you have the picture of the rooms this helps a lot with the description so you're not really uh making up things you're not really guessing what it will look like you actually have a good visual um you get offline i got these pictures off of booking online uh, booking.com and i think i actually just googled it in the images and these are the images that they use but you can actually add these images to the file um, and I'll show you how to do uh, that as well my manuscript is broken down to each chapter some people where they get here they get crazy they get uh, the acts the scenes the chapters things like that I keep it very simple I just break it down by chapters um, and I actually color code them as well so yellow are chapters that are completed but they haven't been revised yet so I'm up to chapter 9 in the story so it's gonna be longer than chapter 20 um but this is where I got to now until I get to the point once I have it color coded so that the label is completed unedited partially complete which is me mean, which means that um I started the, the revisions and I have incomplete which is red um for whatever whatever I want to use that for and I have complete and revised complete and revised is when I edit a story when I look at it when I look it over and I have checked it myself my first draft things like that so I know this chapter is done this chapter is done this chapter is done I can just actually go straight through and um Scrivener actually tells me based on those labels which um chapters are done and we actually look at the cork board view of these outlines and things and also the outliner this actually tells you complete unedited and things like that on the outline but I like the cork board view because you can actually write notes about each chapter so when you actually look at chapter 17 I have a summary about chapter 17 but when I actually go to chapter 17 nothing's done so this is a good thing about outlining you can um you can actually look at what you're doing and who gets killed someone celebrates something detective Colin finds old evidence detectives respond to the scene and find evidence so you can actually outline your story without having to actually begin it or start it or, or it can be started so you actually know where you're going and then you're not getting confused so one of the things that happens with most writers that free write and, and by free write I mean they don't confine themselves to writing in chronological order in terms of the chapters so they're not a they're not a writer that says you know what I can't go into chapter 5 even though chapter 4 has me a writer's block I'm stuck um, I can't go on until I finish this chapter I'm not that type of writer I'm that type of writer to say hey I can put chapter four aside and work on chapters five, six, seven, eight, and get back to chapter four later. That's how I write. So with Scrivener, this helps a lot because you can actually summarize on the corkboard um, which chapters 
uh, which each chapter is about, and then you can go right back to it. So you're you're staying fresh, and you can reference the characters if you need to. So everything, and you also have notes as well. So I have notes as well of each chapter. That, so basically, these are kind of going to be the the notes before, even if you have one outline before you even start um, the plotting and things like that. You can actually. Um, put your chapter notes in here and these are going to be the notes that you put in the cork board uh, if you want to uh, that, that's what I use you have scenes as well if you want to add notes because so you don't have to be bogged down to trying to remember things you can actually jot it down and, and they'll always be here you can jot, jot down notes Eugene gets caught up and somehow involved in a crime things like that so you can all uh, we need a scene with Judge Barrett in which his corruption gets exposed so these are the things like that because we don't have the chapter already we don't have the exact chapter and when this is going to occur so I just put the scenes these are the type of scenes we need to build chapters off of later next I have the synopsis um, I just do an outline version a first draft and a final draft of the synopsis so it's not much to that it just save it as a text document the front matter um, it's already in here the title page things like that um, the the title page copyright page things like that the ebook version dedications and the research research is any research related to your story so if I'm going to research a story this is a vigilante um, mystery I may want to put the definition of vigilante I may want to put the criminal elements of a homicide I may want to put jurisdictional things um, regarding crime because my story goes from Philadelphia to New Jersey to New York so there may be different state jurisdiction um, or restrictions uh, legal restrictions that may occur that you may want to put in your research just so you have it just so you know um, you can reference that and you can keep the accuracy within your story so any type of research here you can also add links to websites so if you want to say hey where did I get the information from you can add the website here you can go right to it like I said for those of you who outline by hand, they use composition books, notebooks, worksheets, this makes it so much easier because you have all your resources, all your notes in one place. You don't have to sit there and, and, and do this, which is the noise that you can hear it flipping through pages and keeping everything organized and worrying about losing things. You don't have to do that in Scrivener. Everything's going to be here. You can do, you can research and reference videos anything you need to do you can reference anything um, and you also have the template sheets which are the ones I use for my actual characters and pre-production so right now we'll get into that was the outline that's basically what I um, do to use for my my stories so I'll expand each one and you'll have your chapters, your places, your characters, your pre-production. So this is what your story is going to look like. And I'll show you how to, to outline it right now. So right here we have um, our, which is basically our, our standard template from Scrivener. This is standard novel template. Up here we have the, the binder, the collection. And this is called the binder. This is uh, each one being outline like this is the binder you have your collections you have your sync with mobile devices you have your add item this is what you're going to use a lot sometimes I just right click and add the item and then you have all your other your project keywords things like that so just before we dive into the outline I don't want to be all over the place but one of the things that I like about this is you have project targets so with your manuscript you can say hey I want this manuscript to be 80,000 words and I want each session I sit down Oh, 80,000 words. And I want each that documents included in compile only. Um, I want each session that I sit down and write, I want to write at least 5,000 words per session. You know what I mean? So w when you go into your, your actual story, you start typing, you're writing the scene and you're typing away and typing 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 and you go back to your project targets and then your session targets I'm 25 words into my 5,000 I'm 25 words into my 80,000 manuscript target so you can actually track your progress and see 
how good you're doing and how close you're, uh, you're getting to your goals. You, for each chapter, each scene, you also have the word count at the bottom right here. So you can actually see how um, where your word count is. So with that being said, I'm going to trash this. <laughs> this scene so it's still it's still here you can still type in it you can still use it until you empty the trash um the chapter i move that to the trash the front matter stays the same and uh you can actually empty the trash and it will be deleted permanently so one of the first things I want to do is add my files and I add a, a, add a cover to the book so I'll go into one of my files and if you're like me you have a bunch of book covers that you ordered or got pre-made covers things like that and I'll pick one let's see I'll pick a I'll pick a story this is another story I was working on you'll have please note that text files are imported this is another story I was working on called Stray Bullet. Um, I don't know when this is coming out. So, I'll just put cover. I'll change this name to cover. And I'll drag this up here. So, one of the things you need to notice is when you drag something, you have to look at where it's going. If it's on the characters, it's going to get moved to characters. So, then it'll be under this umbrella. Your cover will be under here. Same thing over here. So, you want to make sure you're at the line above where you want it to be at so it can be um, posted properly. So and the same thing you want to do is you want to add, I want to add a folder and I'll name this pre-production and I'm going to put that right after my manuscript. I'm going to put all my outlining right after the manuscript and I'll add and when you get to the pre-production you'll add a new text and that will be your concept. And then after that, you can duplicate this as well, and then duplicate that as well, and then you just rename it. So you double click, rename it to your plot, and then your other scene, you rename it to your notes. And this is where you'll put your all your pre-production, your outline information in. So I actually move my manuscript. I want to move my manuscript under places. And I'll actually create another one for my synopsis. Add another folder. And I'll put the synopsis under the front matter. So the character sketch, so you have your characters. And then your character sketching. So the next thing I'm gonna do is add folders. So I have my main characters. Another folder for supporting characters. And I'll add a text with a character list. So what happens is when you have the character list, you'll list your characters. So you'll have a number one, John Doe, number two, Jane Doe, and number three. Mike Doe. So we will have this. You can put something like main character. Main Doe. Main character. Mike Doe. Supporting character. So you'll, you'll actually have your whole list of characters. So you don't mess anything. You don't mess any names up. And then you'll have um, their title, their role um, per se. So my, I'll keep the character list up top. And I'll put my main character over the supporting characters just because I like to say organized. And I like the template sheet. So this actual character sketch template sheet, I'm actually going to add it up here. That's the character sketch. And I'm going to duplicate it. And I'm going to duplicate it again. And then I'll move one of these down here to the supporting characters. So in this character, I'll have... John Doe and I have rename oh gosh J 
Jane Doe. And then I believe it was Mike Doe. So you can double click or you can just click the main rename. Mike Doe. So now you have each of your characters. So you have your your character list. You have your main characters who are Jane Doe, John Doe. Even when you click on the cork board, you'll have that. John Doe is... Uh, road cop who is investigating a homicide. Jane Doe is a detective working alongside John Doe on a homicide case. And excuse my typos. I'm trying to do this fast. So you can actually have little notes here that, that won't pop up here. So then you'll have, you'll change the character name up top. John Doe. Rolling the story. Rogue cop. Physical. His, well, rolling the story is um, a road cop who is upset about police corruption and is investigating a suspicious murder. So you'll have that little um, summary about his role in the story. So he's a police officer. Open parentheses, Atlanta PD. And your physical description five, five foot nine, hundred and eighty five pounds, white male, black hair, brown eye, you know, things like that. You just add all the things into it personality, habits, mannerisms, background internal conflicts, external conflicts, and any notes you want to put. Um, so then you can hit enter, and you can actually insert an image. So if I go to the projects, like the guilty verdict, and I'll look at, oh, I thought I had them in there. I wonder if they're in my downloads. Hold on. What are my downloads? I'm not actually not. Well, if it were if it were an image, you can. Hey, I'll use this. This is the image of um, not center, and this is the image of John Doe. So this will be the image. So when I go to my main characters, I look at John Doe. I can open it up. You double click the corner. I can look at the notes. I can look at what is it. It may be a, a point in the story where I'm describing him. I'm saying his brown eyes, or he's leaking, or or blood is dripping from his face, and I can go to the picture. Okay, this is what he looks like. His two teeth, one of his two teeth got knocked out. So you'll have that option. You can do the same thing with Jane, though, and you can do the same thing with Mike, though. So um, that's how you do your main characters as well. And for the places, I use the setting sketch as well. The setting sketch is very similar to the character sketch. So I'll put the setting sketch in places, open it up. You can duplicate it. Um, and you'll have your different scenes. Um, so the one setting could be John Doe's home. You know what I mean? And I'll go, you can go to Google and put Philadelphia, oh no, Atlanta. Atlanta homes. And you'll put an image and you'll get an image hey maybe he's a freaking super successful cop <laughs> he, he can afford a, a house like this so you put downloads you'll save it and you'll go back to your scrivener and even like as well as this it's very simple you insert your image and then you'll have his home uh, the home of John Doe and I center it and then I describe the home the season, related characters, who's related to this home, uh, it'll be John Doe, the, what's the story of this this home and in, in, in the, the role of this home in this story. So then you'll do the same thing for each setting you have in the story just so it stays consistent. And like I said, it goes back to your details, it stays consistent. And 
The next is the actual, not do you can make that small, the next is the actual manuscript. The actual manuscript, I'm going to add a text. This is going to be chapter, it's going to be a chapter I, this is my chapter and I'll duplicate and duplicate and duplicate and duplicate and duplicate and duplicate and you want, well I want them in order, so one, two, three, four, five, six, and of course this will be chapter seven. And you can just outline your chapters such like this. You can write them out in your manuscript. Chapter one, John Doe wakes up to a phone call about a homicide. Then we may go into the setting uh, or or another character, Jane Doe, entering work and learning about the homicide. They may actually go police responding to, oh gosh, the homicide scene. So, each chapter can be broken down into what you need it to be. Um, you have it all under your manuscript. It's all unorganized. It's, I, I mean, I said it's all unorganized. It's all organized. To me, I can't do the acts and the scenes and things like that. And then when you get into the actual chapter, I'm actually writing the chapter. I'm actually getting to it, writing the chapter of what it's going to be. And then I'm, getting, I'm diving right into the chapter. And one of the things I, I want you to be cognizant of and aware of that people who have started in Microsoft Word and want to bring their stuff over you can copy and paste um, your work your chapters each of your chapters into Scrivener but the only thing is about is the formatting when you paste it and you match the style or you paste it period it, the formatting converts so anything that's in italics it's going to not be when you copy and paste it here so be aware of that make sure when you, when you when you're copying and you're verifying and you're making sure that everything is that you want bold is bold everything you want in italics is italics anything you have underlined is underlined because there is a formatting issue when you copy and paste over to the program that's the only thing um, I saw that you need to be made aware of so when it comes to the labels if you like to label your chapters you will go to you see they already have the colors but they already have them in different things character note things like that some people label their outline differently this could be your notes your character so then you can go right to it me I like to label progress so you can edit it and you can edit it uh, double click on it you can edit what it means um, unfinished that will be for my chapters you can actually add as well you can add other colors you know what I mean? You can pick a color, you can double click, make whatever you want, and use different things for different characters. Unfinished, and this would be finished, and this would be uh, not started at all. It, it all depends. You have different. You can you, you have different things. You can organize these. You can sort these as well. So um, the status as well. You have status labels. And you have your metadata and your project properties. So, if I have this chapter and I want to label it and it's unfinished, so I started it is unfinished. I know it's unfinished. And then you click up here in your view. And then let me see. You use label color in binder. So this is what you want to do. You want to use your label color in the binder and that is going to allow you to see the actual color in the binder so once again if I take my label and I click on red because I didn't start this chapter yet then it will come up red label this this chapter isn't done somehow I finished this chapter everything everything's color coordinated everything organized so when you look at it you you pull it up you can say hey I started chapter one I didn't start chapter two I didn't start chapter three and I completed chapter four this makes it so organized it makes it so easy to see, so easy to get.
get back to work and see what I was doing. Then you go to your manuscript as well, and you also have the labels at the top, at the top of each corner as well. So you have to summarize. So even if you're looking at the cork board or if you're looking at the outliner, you can see what's unfinished, what's not started, and things like that. So that's how you, that's how I organize um, my work in Scrivener. And then you have your front matter, which you can complete. You can fill in your front matter as well. Your name, address, everything like that. Me, I already have uh, pre-made um, front matter dedication and things like that for all of my books, copyright pages, everything like that. So I would just copy and paste that information into here. On, um, you have a paperback stuff as well, like your copyright page, your ISBN number, you insert your dedication. This will be the title. So you can do all that here as well. And your synopsis, I would say just add a text. And it could be your outline, and then you can add another text for your final draft, first draft, whatever you want to do, and then you can also put labels on these as well, so you know what's done, what's not done. You had you can add status to it, to do first draft, revise. So there's so many things you can do once you start playing with it. I created this outline because I believe it's very, 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 very simple research you don't have to worry about research and things like that right now but if you need to you can add a text document to, to the research you, you have folders and things like here you have standard paper bag, you have ebook covers you have a lot of things in here but like I said you can add any research you want into this um, this umbrella right here this folder and then the template sheets we already use those so you can actually get rid of those that can actually go into the trash as well so these are the main things you, you'll have you and you'll need I think for a very solid outline depending on your writing style is the cover the pre-production for your outline the characters um let me see oh you know what so this is so you take this folder put it in characters and you take this folder put it in character so now they're in there properly you have your characters your places which is the setting your manuscript which is actually the chapters I show you how to color code them I show you how to add a status to them and then you have your front matter synopsis and research and your trash obviously so I think these are all the things you need even if you once you get into it you may not even need the the novel formatting this may just be the things you need to um proceed and then when you're ex and then you have your export your import as well you can export your your document you can save as a template if this is the standard novel you want you can save it as a template and then change it to basic novel and then when it comes up when you add to open a new document you'll have the option of this template so you won't have to go back and make changes as well I also I'll try to save this template somewhere on the website so you can download it as well um, so I put OK. So when you new project and I go to fiction, basic novel. So that template is there. I'll see if I can upload it for you guys that are interested in it um, onto our website, www.creedombooks.com. So, like I said, you have your character list, you have your main characters, you have your court board version of it, your view, you can add a text. If you add a text, you will, it will open up a new document for another character or a new sheet. So you can add a new from a template. You can um, you can add a new template as well from the character sheets, and, and you or you could just duplicate them. Uh, one day I'll just duplicate them, and then you'll have the other one, the John Doe. You know what I mean? So you have that option as well. So you have the new characters that you can edit and things like that. So that is the basic outline of my book so as you can see I have them all here as well for my actual story the guilty verdict that's what you guys to be on the lookout for and we have all of the same exact same exact setup for my books I found this very easy you could dive right into your chapters you can outline your chapters like I said you have your regular document view and you have your cork board view your cork board view you can See here, add different scenes about uh, and add different um, paragraphs, quick notes about each chapter. 
and then dive into it. And then you'll have your, your pre-production with your notes, your scenes, your outline, your plot, your concept. So you have so much uh, reference work that you can use to complete a very solid novel, a very good novel. And then uh, the rest is history. Like I said, this is Scrivener program. This is an outline of, um, this is basically a tutorial of how to make a very simple outline for your books. This program has so many features. You just take some time just to look through some things and and play with some things. Like I said, you have your project targets, you have project statistics, project notes, project keywords. You have so much you can do with this document. So just make sure you explore it as well. This template may not be the end all be all for you. You may build off of this outline template and create something better. Um, you may want more. I may add some things to it. Um, but I think it's good. I think it's a good start for people who are just getting started with Scrivener. Obviously, the people who have been using it for years and who have been who have mastered it and are experts in it, they have their own ways, they have their own styles. But for someone who's just starting out and is very new to it and is very used to using Microsoft Word, this is a very good way to organize your work and to outline your work just to get started in the next novel and it will keep the production and your progression very smooth and very and very fast. So, if you have any questions, you can contact me at creedombooks at gmail.com. Make sure you check out our website, www.creedombooks.com. And sign up to our subscriber list. Sign up to our YouTube channel. Subscribe to our channel. We'll be dropping more videos. They're on the way. We're going to get you guys ready for 2019. This new year to get you writing, to get you marketing and then get you profiting off your creative work so check it out so like the video share the video subscribe to our channel www.creedombooks.com you can find our books you can find apparel your fiction addiction shirts we have patches coming make sure you check out our good stuff all right if you have any questions shoot us an email and we'll build off it thank you have a good one